So here we are back on the last three upgrades that we can make in the red XP screen here. So we've been through all of these other ones. We're now up to, uh, this one's probably one of the most useful upgrades, regional train stabling. Uh, so we're just gonna pick that and install it. And that's what we're going to talk about right now. So if you remember before, we only have currently a handful of regional trains. We have some like here that pull into a station and then we have a um, stabling sensor and that pushes the train down into our shunting group and then it waits in there for how its period of time. So remember regional trains have these little stopping points, 20 minutes at Mukavor. Um, and then at a certain time, a number of minutes before departure, you can see there, three minutes in this case, it comes back out into the platform it needs to come out to, and then it automatically starts the next leg of its journey and carries on. Now that's fine, but that does take up a fair amount of space. And importantly, in this case, there's no reversing functionality here. There's no ability for that train to come in from this direction turn around and then drive out in that direction. Um, that's not possible here and that takes extra space. So down at um, Svibodsky, Svibodsky, it does have this little turning triangle which is pretty basic. It kind of works but it's not got very high capacity if you had more than a few trains in the station at the same time trying to use this they'd probably all start blocking each other and stuff but at least this allows the um, train to turn around however in this case because we don't have any sidings the train has to take up the platform for the remainder of its stopping time so that's not very useful either so when we added urban transit contracts we added a coach yard in this case to Vlodstwerf station and the coach yard by default only allows you to originate urban transit contracts. So uh, you know here in the automated manager, you can choose urban transit um, and they come up from the coach yard. They come out of the coach yard and you tell it to go into the coach yard at the end. But now that we've unlocked this uh, regional train stabling feature in tier three, we can now do something very similar with our regional trains. And I have one here that's quite complicated just to kind of show you how this would work. So this is a train that's gonna come in here. It's gonna go via uh, Novi Dvor uh, to, uh, through to Wrocław. It then is gonna wait 20 minutes at Wrocław station. It's then gonna come back out it's gonna come back to Mukabor. It's gonna wait at Mukabor for 20 minutes, and then it's gonna carry on in the same direction, importantly, up here to, what's it called? Um, Ozobovitsya. So that's basically the route that we're gonna take. Now, I'm happy for it to stop here because it's gonna carry on in the same direction, so it can use the existing functionality, but note that at the minute there's only a stabling sensor on platform two. So I'll try and use platform two, save me adding another one, which might mess with the other trains that are already coming in there. So accepting this is obviously the same as accepting it. any others. We'll come in on platform one, which is our sort of fast platform. And uh, we kind of got a few different ways we can go through here. We can go up platform three, a platform three this way if we want to it might be better because i think there's a little bit less traffic in that direction um that is going up here so that shouldn't get in the way too much um, then we get to platform three we're not stopping um, here and then we're getting into Vrosław station here now at the moment we can get into that coach yard from any of these platforms, um, 654321. And so it doesn't really matter which one we pick. I mean, we wouldn't go platform six because that's really for trains going in the other direction. Um, we kind of need a platform maybe, well, if we take platform one, because that's already set up for the coach yard because we already used it for the urban transit contract. So our Reggie train's gonna come up here. It's gonna go to platform one. Now what's gonna happen? Well, it's gonna wait for 20 minutes um, and if we don't do anything, it will sit in platform one waiting, doing nothing. I think it will go to the signal and try and get through, but whatever. So then on the next leg, if we click this, 
they're saying well what's going to happen now well we're going to use the coach yard so we can come out onto a different platform and actually again because it's probably already configured it might make more sense to come into platform two which isn't used for anything at the moment and then it's going to come back down here and we want to go to platform two at Mookaball because that's the one with the stabling sensor but note that we've already got a congestion here so um, we you see here if we move this I think it also moves the um, the previous leg but I just need to check that if I go previous leg uh, no actually that's fine we just made it stay longer in the coach yard so it's going to come out platform 2 it's going to go to platform 2 here and again because it's now got a stop for 20 minutes it will automatically go into one of these sidings using that stabling sensor which is what we want and then on the final leg we can only come out to platform two and four um, really we should probably come to platform four because that's kind of the correct platform for going in that direction so we'll come back out to platform four which is fine and then we go up here we go platform six platform well we can use that we've got an advanced sensor here now so we could use any just so we can be clever um, so that should all be okay so I'm gonna accept that but I also want to run a few checks so I need to make sure that that has this configured for Popovicio which it does I need to make sure um, I need a stabling sensor on platform one um, which is that one um, I noticed that they're lower speed lines as well they're sort of red rather than orange but uh, it's probably not not a biggie so one of those things they need to do is say right if I go to that signal um, and again you've got kind of different options here so you could say well um, only if the next leg is that way do I want to do anything but in this case I think all regional trains we're happy to stable in the coach shard so what we'll do is we'll just say add some commands so we'll say go to signal um, oh I'm missing my shunting circuit sorry let's pop that on there um, yeah I'm not too sure about which of these needs it let's let's do that let's do this again so go to signal which it's done then it will go to shunting group so the coach yard acts like a large shunting group so we say go to shunting group um, and then that's fine we don't actually have to do the next bit of it which is good because then if we come out of here and we click on the coach yard you can see that we can auto dispatch trains They're, these are unticked by default but um, I've ticked both regional and urban tran um, transit so here um, we can say let's bring that a little bit earlier so four minutes before departure and by default the trains will come out with a locomotive at the front which obviously makes sense but if you were doing this and your train was actually going on to say Brokhoff and you needed the locomotive to be at the sort of this end of it it's in the timetable editor so it would be is that, let me find a regional train let's pause it a second so I don't lose where I am so on here what you can do is when it gets to a point where you're coming let's see next leg oop next leg where it's coming out again this is the bit where you can say I want the locomotive pushing the train out if you're oh if you're planning on carrying on in that direction so it's in the timetable so you can do that so that bit's fine and the other important thing and I don't think I need that shunting circuit actually so let's just delete that save a bit of money um, and what happens is that the train will automatically come out four minutes um, ready remember we configured that there four minutes before departure of the next train and because this is an arrival sensor against that signal it will put it into whatever platform it's due for and in our case it's going to be platform two so actually we also at the moment anyway don't need that so let's ditch that as well and I need to just make sure that this is set up correctly that for Mukabor which is right okay so this looks like it's kind of happy 
but like with most of these um, regional trains it's kind of best to keep a bit of an eye on it the first time um, because if you don't sometimes they go a bit awry so I think this is our new one isn't it yeah so that's going to do that it's going to go up there and by the way if you get issues like um, this trains obviously a little bit close to the one behind and you see someone keep stopping the signals you've got a couple of options you can obviously sometimes add more intermediate signals so it can get closer before it starts slowing down but the other thing is is sometimes you just add another minute to its timetable for its next arrival point and you're not going to lose any points then you might lose some money but at this point in our game we don't really need uh, the money we've got 25 million we're, we're doing all right so anyway this is our train that we're watching just make sure that all of the routing is set up correctly that's going to go into our stabling platform and then what should happen is that stabling sensor will kick in and it will send that to that signal and then into the coach yard and the nice thing is this just all happens automatically so dead easy and really really useful uh, remember they only go shunting speed so if you have a lot of trains you might be better off having another coach yard you know you could have one at each corner or whatever so if we look here we can see the next train is where well, it's coming back out uh, 48 to 49 so let's just speed that up a right. bit so our train I wasn't really watching but our train came out there and you can see it came onto platform 2 and once it then automatically becomes the next put the next leg the rest of it works like normal and then hopefully it's going to get to Mukabor platform 2 and the reason it's stopping on platform 2 oh uh, hang on a second, hang on a second. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ooh. I've just realized that I think that stabling sensor is only set up for that end so I need to set it up for this end um, so um, again I don't want to start getting complicated the problem is if you start filtering these down and saying oh only trains going to that station that station then what happens is you add a new train going to a different station and you forget to update that and it doesn't work or whatever so let's just say any trains here that need to be stabled we will do exactly what we did before we will go to signal we will go to shunting group we will then reverse the train we will wait until so many minutes before three minutes is probably fine because these are quite close to the station but again you can scrolly wheel on that if you want to change the time and then um, that's the that's reused train there oh just need to make sure because I did it wrong before and then just go to the pl platform once you're ready so that should be fine now I just need to make sure that's going to trigger because I only just added it let's see no uh, I think because the um because the train was already in the station I think I um I kind of broke that a little bit so I'm gonna have to do this one manually unfortunately but anyway you've seen um, how the the coach yard works for stabling trains the nice thing here is that's effectively a massive shunting group that takes up one square so it's very very economical on space compared to if you look at this it's like literally three sidings you can only fit three trains and it's taken up all of that space so once you get to level three definitely get that as your your first thing um, and that will be grand so I'm just going to um, finish tidying up this thing um, once it's ready to go back into the station and in the next bit we will look at the advanced routing sensor so our second to last upgrade in here is the advanced routing sensor um, it basically tells you what it does but it's um, fairly straightforward um, and the issue here that comes up sometimes is once you start playing the larger maps you'll realize that the the difference in speed between like an intercity which I think goes is it 220 kilometers an hour top speed or 200 kilometers an hour but a freight train that's only going 80 then you'll start creating congestion as soon as you start adding lots of trains 
then you have a freight train going along here intercity comes up behind it at over twice as fast so you kind of want a way of saying well i want my freight trains to, to kind of go one way and maybe my intercity trains to go another or to use a different track now this map doesn't exactly have lots of space on it it's quite compact it's quite fun but it's quite compact so we've got a couple of places where that could be useful one of them is here um, we haven't actually got space to double the track all the way from here but we could also add an, another loop uh, which is obviously what they do in real life but the other thing here is we've got this um, space along here so I can certainly demonstrate um, how this thing works so at the minute the, this is a 200 kilometer an hour line I think um, I don't really like the coloring of these because it's quite hard to actually see um, what what speed they are until you actually create a new line right so let's imagine we want freight trains to go onto a separate loop along here now freight trains only get 80 miles an hour but maybe we put commuter trains so let's just pick the 120 kilometer an hour track we don't need to go um, the full oh oh okay what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move that somewhere else because that I didn't realize that that actually blocks the track which is a bit annoying so we go along here um, and then we can do that we need to configure this so normally we would say right you're going to go here if you're going to make a layoff um, and you're going to go here but also of course going to make a lie of so what we need to do oops is we need to configure it for the different trains so instead of doing what we've just done let's just delete those because it's going to be wrong so let's go back to here we said right let's configure it for a uh, freight because we definitely know what freight is going to do so freight is going to go there it's basically going to go there for everywhere so i might as well just do all others what does that say no matching station this will be used yet so that's fine um, but let's notice it's only for freight uh, and if I go back to here and say right well I now want to configure it for um, actually for all trains so if I, I, I suspect this would probably work if I do that for all trains but this for freight then that hopefully will work so all others all trains freight is going to use that one for all others oh it looks like yeah it looks like this this isn't like a a base one that's going to work for all of them i think i'm going to need to set them all separately so commuter that way for everything Ooh, that one and then yeah yeah okay commuter freight we've got that for everything into city that for everything urban transit now they're actually quite slow um, so maybe we also put this for those uh, and then a regional or fast so they would need to go here so I think that should be everything that we need to do now obviously the problem here is we're not going to get a busy enough service to really demonstrate this properly but I might be able to if I'm clever enough I suspect there's probably an intercity coming out of platform one at some point let's have a look if not I'll, uh, I'll add one and then I'll add a freight train to come out just before it to go into the loop and allow it to be passed by the intercity train hopefully that will work so so here we are waiting for our train you can see here this freight train is set to arrive just before an intercity which is right behind it and you can see what will happen is the freight train will get to here and take the slow route and the intercity which is right behind it will get sent down this track and will actually overtake the freight train so let's just speed up a little bit so you see this is the intercity train i haven't got the timing exactly right um, but as you can see the intercity train had to stop but here 
because it's getting sent using our advanced routing sensor the intercity train which can go faster than the freight has overtaken it and then left the freight train behind to carry on once that intercity train's got out of the way so that's it really in this map as i mentioned before there aren't many places i've set one up here as well to set the freight down one track and passenger trains down the other obviously it depends on the volume of traffic whether that's actually going to make any difference or not if you only have you know one train every 30 minutes then it's not going to make any difference having that set up but on some of the larger maps <coughs> i know in places like munich you've got large sections very long sections of a uh, track where you're going to need to use those advanced routing sensors um, but yeah otherwise that so let's look at the contracts manager so here we are level three tier three of the red upgrades and this is the last option which is custom contracts now just to save some time i've already uh, upgraded this and i've already built a what do they call it a scheduler office for i'm not going to even try and pronounce that station and you can apply this to any station uh, what it gives you basically is a bit like these um, other dispatcher offices and conductor offices similar kind of idea but this one doesn't offer you anything instead you have to go in and create your own contracts and you're allowed up to six of them if you don't have all of the contract offers unlocked you will have less but you have up to six and I've already created one so this blueprint they call it effectively is a freight train that goes from there into Electro Siplovnia, um, whatever however that's pronounced uh, and it's just a freight train and the reason the custom contracts are useful is quite simply you know on a map like this this isn't a massive map but there are quite a few stations on it you generally find there are parts of your map that aren't really getting the most traffic through them and obviously that's dependent on the contracts that you're offered if you're not offered an intercity service from here to here then you're you know you're not going to have one so with a custom contract you get to invent that yourself and it's as simple as hitting a plus next to a new slot I'll zoom out a bit because it's not very helpful i tend to find the platforms change as you add stations so I, i'm not going to set the platforms until i've basically planned out my entire contract so from here the Lugoleka will go to uh, however that's Psie Pole maybe then along to here and then along to here and then along Popovicia and then finally here so that's going to be my journey I'm going to tell it I want this to be an intercity and uh, I have the option of whether it passes um, the station or stops at it um, if you uh, it's because I, I should have chosen the correct type before I started adding these so let's go back and add them again if you add um, if you choose certain types then by default it won't stop at the station it will just be passing so you see here because it intercity and freight um, I'm not sure about these other ones will by default uh, be passing and not stopping so that just makes it a bit easier because obviously with the intercity services you don't tend to um, stop places that often and um, so it's better to do it that way and then again just add all these in add that add that and finally add this it's going to be a fairly straightforward run and you can see now that i've actually clicked through it's actually corrected all of the platforms for me anyway they're, they're the platforms that i want to use which is great it's offering me a lot of money which is also good and you can see that it's gonna stop here and so at the moment let's just move that on a bit to here it's going to pass this station pass this station you see there's a conflict here so it's up to me to decide what I want to do with that um it's always the problem with these uh, these things once you start getting a lot of commuter trains and you start getting a lot of stuff in the way um that's still not gonna work so let's go here it's okay that's okay 
uh, that's okay that's okay so that's fine and like other contracts you have a choice of whether you want to continue running this um, or if you just run it once it will still appear in the list and then you can choose it and run it again whenever you want but obviously in most cases it's easier to um, run things on a schedule and it looks okay so let's just check it's going to come in at 519 which is half an hour away so I'm just going to accept that uh, it's put it in there as a they call it a blueprint and you can see here that I'll be offered it as a little arrow so if I ever want to run a one-off I can just click that and run it but if I just speed this up and we'll get to quarter past and there obviously won't be a lot to look at it will appear as a train just as normal but this time I just have the uh, the flexibility to do it the way that I want to do it which is great so this will be uh, the last feature of the reds so you see here we've unlocked everything we've demonstrated everything but at this point now hopefully you have a slightly better understanding of how to use um, some of these systems and therefore you'll be more confident taking on the larger maps so I think I'm going to look at I think it's Munich which is enormous and now that I've a bit more confident with these things then I'll be able to have a, a bit of a better run at that I am going to do one last video which is going to be just maybe tips and tricks things that are not necessarily covered by the features that I've been demonstrating in here but maybe just things that I've learned are you know ways to get around certain problems uh, and that won't necessarily be very long there's maybe four or five things that I think are worth remembering when you try and sort of lay out your maps but otherwise we hopefully will have an intercity train appearing in a few minutes so once that gets to 19 I'll slow it down just a little bit and as with all trains one of the tips and tricks is you can see conflicts at platforms from the timetable editor but you can't see any conflicts you might have at a junction so I'm just going to run this now just for the sake of it it might end up getting um, blocked but this will sort of demonstrate the contract and how it works you can see here obviously that's just going to work like a normal train and it's not stopping anywhere and that freight is there so hopefully oh yeah so I've blocked it because I I didn't look at the timetable but that's fine that will go through and obviously the rest of it should just work like normal so yeah that's that um, custom contracts like I say I think the main use for them is if you feel like you kind of want more money and you've got parts of your map that are not used very much then that can be quite a useful way of just popping in something but not particularly difficult to understand not difficult to use and that's the last of the how-to videos so hopefully you enjoyed it any questions or comments please put them below and i'll see you in the next video